How's that? Yes. Hurrah. Um, could I invite you to find the service booklet, and if you're able, would you please stand? Welcome, in the name of the Lord, God's grace and mercy be with you. And also with you. As God's people, we have gathered from Sheffield, Rotherham, Barnsley, Doncaster and Goole. Let us worship him together. From village, town and city, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. In our unity and diversity, let us come before him with thanksgiving. And him with music and song. As the Diocese of Sheffield, we proclaim, the Lord is a great God. The great King above all gods. Do please be seated. Friends, we are lay leaders and we are clergy and we gather as the diocesan family. You may be full of trepidation, you may be nervous, you may be anxious, you may be nervous and anxious about the things that you've left behind, you may be nervous and anxious about the things that you will encounter here, you may be an absolute extrovert who has been deprived of such gatherings for two years and you may be high with uh, excitement. Um, Covid continues to be a factor and a disruptive one. Um, there are some who had hoped to be with us on site and are now uh, having to join us online because they've tested positive in the past few uh, days. Um, where, where Covid carefulness is concerned, uh, we all know it's, it's our Christian courtesy to go at the pace of the most uh, cautious and adapt to the needs of the most uh, cautious. Um, there's one other person not here um, this morning who had hoped to be here who I want to uh, mention by name and for whom I want to pray before we um, sing our first song, um, and that's Pip Salmon. Um, I don't know, even if all those of you who belong to the um, church family at Christ Church, Pittsmore will have heard this news, I expect so, uh, but there was an arson attack uh, last night. Um, Pip describes the effect um, as severe uh, but not catastrophic. Uh, when I spoke to him this morning, he'd been up since three o'clock uh, with the emergency services trying to bring things uh, under control, and the next steps are not yet clear, so uh, he's not able to be with us. And I assured him that we would begin our conference by praying for him uh, and those who belong to that church family. So let us pray. A loving God, we hold before you Pip, and with him the members of the church family at Christ Church Pittsmore Lay and Ordained. We thank you that this, uh, this sad episode has not been worse, that there has been no injury, let alone loss of life. Uh, we thank you that the building stands. We thank you for those who, with Pip, have attended the fire overnight. Thank you that we have access to our emergency services. And we particularly pray for Pip now uh, praying that you would bless him with uh, wisdom and courage and his colleagues alongside him uh, as decisions are made about what uh, needs most urgently to be done next. Uh, we commend him and them to you and pray that out of uh, what appears to be uh, a, a really sad and bad thing, you would, through the power of our Lord's resurrection, bring good. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, whatever your state of heart, I hope you have come with some sense of expectation. Why are we here? Uh, we're here in the end to meet God and to meet with one another. Uh, we're here to talk to God and to talk to one another. We're here to listen to God and to listen to one another. And I hope you have some sense of anticipation that together uh, we may hear the Spirit of God giving us fresh vision and direction uh, for the next phase of our life together in our diocese. So in that spirit, shall we stand to sing the splendor of the King.
as people of God, we come before God now as sinners who have brought many burdens with us. And we take a moment of silence to remember God's gracious goodness towards us, even in this moment. We bring these burdens to God and lay them down, asking for forgiveness and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You are invited to take part in a physical prayer, so you might like to sit down for this. Where as you sit, you're invited to take part in the act of identifying and laying down the burdens we bring with us at the beginning of this conference. First, you're invited to put your hands in front of you, one on top of the other, forming a cup as though you were holding a butterfly. Think about anything that you're carrying with you this morning that causes you to feel burdened and that you would like to give to God in order to give your full attention to the potential of these few days away. Hold the cup of your hands further away from your body as if you are giving those things to God. Then open your hands with your palms facing away from you in a gesture of giving them away towards God. Now put your hands together again in the cup shape and think of those things which are getting in the way of you worshipping God this morning. Hold your hands further away from your body, as if you are giving those things to God. And in a gesture of repentance, open your hands with your palms facing up, so that those things can be taken by God. Keep your hands in that position as you ask the Holy Spirit to help you to worship and as we sing together. Jesus, be the same. 
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of the world dispels the darkness of our lives and that all that stands in the way of our relationship with God. May the God of love and power Forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The theme of this opening worship is receiving the light. How do we receive the light of Christ? The Lights for Christ website says this, in prayer, we grow closer in our relationships with our Father as we talk and listen to him. We learn as we encounter God through his living word when we read the Bible, in receiving communion, and by journeying alongside the people God has given us in the church, learning together how to live as Christian people. We receive the light of Christ by praying and seeking God's will, participating in the life and worship of the church, reading and reflecting on the scriptures, receiving communion, opening our lives to the Holy Spirit. Later, we will share and receive the light of Christ. First, let us hear encouragement from the Bible to walk in the light and then also to hear how this works out in one person's life. A reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Hi, Mr. Rat. 
Hi, Hannah. Thank you so much for having us today. Oh, lovely to be here. Look at that. You brought nice sunshine also. Yeah, from it's nice. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> I really like that idea that, um, yes, it's important to sometimes have those um, kind of times where you, you do set aside about an amount of time to pray and read the Bible. But if you haven't got time for that every day, then you can pray as you're walking, pray as you're working. Mm praying um, as you're cleaning the house, as you're um, going to work, um, that it doesn't have to be kind of a set aside quiet time. Mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people get really worried that they haven't, you know, well, I haven't got up early and I haven't had that time set aside. And sometimes that's important. Um, but I think it's it's really great to hear um, that, you know, you, you can do those things while you're while you're working. Yeah. And I just want to add on that pray, prayer is like a communication with God, isn't mm -hmm. it? and can communicate even at work also when I'm saying I'm struggling a stressful day I say oh Lord please please be with me and give me the right tool to do the right job mm -hmm. and even now my colleagues know that mm. when Musarat come to work she prayed already mm. sometimes they say oh did you pray hard today <laughs> because we are going to have a very difficult day I say mm. yeah and even tell my patient if they are any religion they have a Methodist Church of England encourage them don't mm -hmm. worry you'll be all right just mm -hmm. i always pray for my patient mm -hmm. and say god what whoever i'm going to touch they will feel your presence mm -hmm. they will have some positive energy and the big thing in my life i say give me at least one person who i can tell i'm christian i have a faith and jesus love you and i, I have so many stories to tell i can share with people and yeah. we don't have to say directly them from reading from the Bible or anything. But I said, whatever your faith, whatever your belief, someone is listening to you. Yeah. Because working in the hospitals, especially last couple of years, was very tense. Mm, and losing imagine. it was very hard. Yeah. And I think it's our faith. I'm still here and I'm still smiling. I love my job, what I'm doing. It. And, and that's up to us now to take his light, light wherever we are. Absolutely. And when you're receiving from Christ and you're walking Christ's light, you start to reflect it to other people without perhaps even realising. Yeah. So like your colleague saying, oh, have you prayed today because we're going to need it on, you know, you being a blessing to your patients. Perhaps sometimes we don't even realise it, but we are, we are bringing that light to other people. Yeah. 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 And like one of my colleagues, her son was going for surgery. She don't believe and, you know, not a Christian. But is, if you want, shall I put your name, your son's name in a prayer release? She said, yeah, do it. She knew that somebody's praying for mm -hmm. her son mm -hmm. before surgery. And even the day she was going, she said, shall we go to the chapel and light a candle? Mm. She said, uh, no. I said, do you want me to go on your behalf? So I did on her behalf. I went to the hospital chapel, light a candle for her. And it, this just little bit, I'm sure people, doesn't matter they believe or not, Jesus still loved them. And that's his say, yes, mm -hmm. just, you don't have to believe to him. Yeah, just acknowledge him yeah. and he will respond to you. Thank you so much. It's been lovely to hear about um, the way that you receive from Jesus as you're working, going about your day. Uh, so thank you so much for chatting with me today. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Friends, at our baptism, we each received the light of Christ. And in the next few moments, we're going to remember the significance of that moment. We're going to recall that each of us, as baptized people of God, each of us is called to lead a life consecrated to God. Each of us is called to receive afresh and to walk afresh in Christ's light daily and to share Christ's light with others daily. So in a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over some bowls of water here at the front. These will then be collected by the area deans who will scatter to the uh, corners of the room. And then as we sing together, I suggest seated, as we sing together the song at the top of page six, um, as you feel prompted to do, you're invited to make your way to... Um, the nearest area dean, you don't need to find your own. Uh, and uh, if you would like to, uh, to sign yourself afresh with the sign uh, of the cross, the sign of Christ which you received uh, at your baptism. 
Uh, the um, Eridines will also each be holding a, a clump of prayer cards. So you're invited to go forward to receive either a, a prayer card uh, or to sign yourself with a cross or to receive a prayer card and to sign yourself with a cross. Let us pray. God of light, bless the use of this water to us that we may be refreshed by the power of your Holy Spirit and may continue to walk by the light we received at our baptism. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Join me together in saying, shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. We pray for the deaneries of Wath and Tankersley. In Wath we give thanks for the diversity and for the appreciation of the richness of our different traditions and for continuing mutual understanding of each other. And we pray for the raising up of focal ministers. We give thanks for the development of focal ministry teams and the contribution they are making in Tankersley. Please give us a clear sense of direction and for awareness that we are all at different stages on the journey of growing together. Lord of life and light, yeah. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the diversity within the deaneries of Attercliffe and Ecclesall. We pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit to bring new life and energy to enable people to serve you daily. Father, we give you thanks for new lights, new initiatives in some of the toughest areas of Attercliffe. We pray you will bless the leaders and all those involved. We ask for your guiding hand, Father, in the recruitment of oversight ministers for several posts now vacant. We pray for a joining up of lights in areas of our deaneries, for mission areas to become established that churches may help each other shine brightly to your glory. Lord of life and light, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you the deaneries of Hallam and Ecclesfield. Thank you so much for all that you are doing there, for those whom you are raising up uh, as focal ministers, for the way in which uh, we see people coming to faith in different places. Thank you for the uh, grafting initiatives that have taken place and we pray for those uh, yet, uh, yet to come about. In two deaneries very diverse in terms of income, social background and churchmanship, we pray for growing unity across churches and we pray too, Father, that you would be uh, raising up and calling others who might serve you in our deaneries. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And in the beating heart of the diocese in Adwickler Street Deanery and Snaithan Hatfield Deanery, we pray in particular for the parishes of Arxey and New Bentley as they seek a new oversight minister and priest. And we, giving thanks for all of our leaders, in particular pray for Stephen Gardner for healing and for Jackie Gardner, who's picking up some of the slack in that area. We pray too for Christine Herbert, whose ordination to serve at Sprotborough has been postponed due to COVID. And we give thanks for the new area dean in Snaithan Hatfield, Tim Mitchell. And we pray for wise discernment across both of these deaneries as we work out how to flourish together across our very large mission areas. Lord of life and light, yeah. hear our prayer. Let us pray for Doncaster and West Doncaster, for the church families serving the streets and neighbourhoods of our city and surrounding towns and villages giving thanks for that emerging and growing sense of cooperation one with another. We pray for the work of our food banks and those supporting 
people with complex lives, for those working with our schools and our young people, and for the blessings that we draw from our centenary project workers, for all our clergy and lay people striving for flourishing mission areas, nurturing disciples who are lights for Christ in the world, and putting Christ at the center of the life of our city and beyond. Lord of life and light, hear our prayer. We pray for the parishes and mission areas of the deaneries of Rotherham and Lawton. Thank you for all these churches shining as lights for Christ in the communities they serve. We pray for oversight ministers and focal ministers and for those discerning their call to these ministries. Help us all as your people in these deaneries to respond fully to our baptismal calling to shine as lights for Christ. Lord of life and light. Yes. And so, Lord God, we ask you to send your blessings on the peoples of Adwickle Street, Doncaster, Snaithan Hatfield, Tankersley and Wath. And now, Lord God, we ask you send your blessings on the peoples of Ettercliffe, Ecclesall, Ecclesfield, Helm, Lawton, and Rotherham. Help, Help us, us to grow together, together to, to understand, understand our differences and to celebrate that we all live, live our lives for the glory of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthen with the grace of the Holy Spirit we may as the dice of Sheffield both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen.
It's uh, about 20 past 12 and lunch is a quarter to one. And for about um, 15 minutes or so uh, before we pick up the closing prayers uh, at the top of page eight, uh, Sophie and I would just like to do a little bit of scene setting and, and perhaps tone uh, setting for the next 48 hours. Uh, the last time any of us gathered for a Dawson conference here, it was in 2018. And uh, that feels like an awful long time ago. Uh, and what a, 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 an awful lot, a horrid lot, we have been through uh, together and individually since then, so that not one of us is the same person that uh, we were four years ago. Uh, but actually, uh, the composition of the room has also changed very significantly in the last four years. I think probably unusually so. Um, so I just want to ask you, please, if you were not here for any part of the diocesan conference in 2018, would you please stand? Okay. You can now sit down if that was, as it were, an accident, if you might have been at the Dawson Conference, but for whatever reason <laughs> were prevented. This isn't a name and shame, it's fine. <laughs> um, still a lot of people standing. Uh, so um, you can now sit down if you were in the Diocese of Sheffield and just not in your current role. So these, I think, are our incomers to the Diocese of Sheffield, even if they had been and gone uh, and come back. Um, so uh, could you give a warm welcome to these um, who have joined us? <laughs> now you can all be seated. Uh, of course, w one of those who is an incomer to the diocese uh, since 2018 is Sophie. Um, so, Sophie, what were you doing four years ago and what's the journey been like for you since? I had to think when you asked me that question um, uh, as we talked about it yesterday. It seems a really long time ago. Um, I uh, uh, had no um, sense um, that I would be here um, doing this uh, in 2018. Um, that was a kind of rapid... Uh, development um, from start to finish really a little bit after that time um, I had I think I had my sights on three different households so to speak at that time um, I was a canon missioner at Durham Cathedral which is a pretty big household um, and an ancient one at that and that's where we lived um, and I was also director of mission discipleship and ministry um, in the Diocese of Durham alongside my role at the cathedral and that indeed was a big household as well uh, which involved a huge amount of variety and different people um, and a team of 12 that I oversaw in the diocese um, who uh, were a bit like family I suppose in lots of ways and then my own household uh, which as I reflect now had five children uh, living at home uh, we were fostering siblings for a couple of years um, who were still quite small at that stage, who then moved on from us. And um, our three uh, birth children were also still at home, and now we've only got one left. <laughs> so all eyes are on her for her shame. <laughs> she better behave herself. Uh, but, um, yeah, lots has changed in that time. And, um, and I think um, lots of people were talking to me about the future at that time, and I have to say, I was fully occupied and not necessarily uh, trying to listen uh, to what they were saying. But I was trying to listen to God, and that's really when the prompt began uh, to respond to the call to come here, I think. And uh, along with many of the other people in the room, you've begun a new role uh, right in the midst of the, of the pandemic. Um, what, what, how do you look back on that? What was, what was particularly tough? Um, were there any um, blessings that you found in the midst? And how is it feeling now, how does it feel to be here? It feels pretty wonderful to be here, doesn't it? Yeah? Does it feel good to be here? I think it does. Um, so, um, I, uh, obviously, it was a, a real shock. Um, I can't say I've often had a mobile phone call um, from an archbishop before, um, but that's how my consecration got cancelled. I was standing in the kitchen, and an unknown number came up, um, and the uh, bishop, archbishop sent to me, said, really sorry, uh, churches have closed, just don't think we can do this 
um, we can't go ahead. So it was a, a kind of rapid um, kind of redirection, really, after that. Um, just to go back a little bit, um, the thing that I noticed um, wasn't so much a desire to be a bishop. It was actually the context um, that spoke to my call. So the tone of the paperwork for the diocese for the Bishop of Doncaster role struck me as warm, uh, honest, I think, um, and um, there was a humorous tone, and I do need to laugh and enjoy my work, um, and I haven't been disappointed, you'll be glad to know. Um, I think the thing that um, I struck me straight away was that people love to buy merch. So all my friends decided to send me uh, little presents, so I do have an Episcopal uh, bath duck, I don't know if anybody uh, needs such an item. I also have a set of uh, nail files in various different shades of mitre um, and um, a whole um, uh, a lot of personalised uh, merch which has Bishop Sophie. I would love to show you the enormous bar of chocolate uh, that I received that said Bishop Sophie on it, and I kid you not, it was this big. Um, proper Cadbury's bar, but I'm afraid it's been eaten. <laughs> However... I did find the other day that someone had um, purchased me a very special item, and I felt like, Pete, it was a time to be sharing. Um, I don't think that this would be your wardrobe uh, item of choice, but I did see our style guru, Jordan, um, sporting such an item uh, from the curate cohort, and so I felt um, that you should indeed be uh, bestowed with this gift today. Um, it says, I can't keep calm, I'm the bishop. <laughs> And I think it really suits him, don't you? You're not going to listen to a word that I say now, are you? <laughs> um, An image none of you will ever be able to forget. <laughs> My work here is done. Um, so the, the other thing that really um, uh, I've, I loved is my portfolio. Um, I've been involved with um, people in training in different ways, both lay and ordained, um, throughout my 25 years of ministry, believe it or not, this summer. Um, and um, I have delighted in every single candidate, uh, whatever the outcome. And I realise that sometimes people are hurt and disappointed on that journey. Uh, others feel fulfilled and joyful. But it's been an utter privilege to walk alongside so many different individuals. Some of you are here. Uh, others are um, serving at home in different ways. Um, perhaps in their day job, but the things I noticed was a really strategic investment in discipleship, Lights for Christ, uh, prayer community, and Youth Work, Centenary Project, amazing. Uh, we learned from that in Durham, and uh, we watched and learned and did things um, in response to Centenary Project, um, and so they're some of the things that have been a real highlight for me. Personally, I really enjoy people, and that's why I went into ministry in the first place. God and people, still as simple as that for me, um, so being behind a screen um, was very, very hard. Um, so I love the fact that I'm out and about now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, since 2018, um, I'm, I'm aware that both the team at Bishopscroft and the membership... Is it right if I take this off now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're struggling to take you seriously. Um, <laughs> both the team at Bishopscroft and the, and the membership of the um, Bishop Senior Staff Team have, have changed considerably. So... Um, I feel really well supported at Bishop's Croft at the moment with Wendy, my PA, Harry, uh, my chaplain, and Claire, the admin assistant. Neil, who has been at Bishop's Croft forever, the gardener for 32 years, is still an absolute stalwart. Um, it just feels, it's a, it is a lovely, close team, and I feel very well supported there uh, day by day. Um, and I'm also really delighted by the appointments I've been able to make since 2018 to the senior staff uh, team. So not only um, Sophie, but also joining us uh, during the pandemic, uh, were Katie, our diocesan um, secretary, and uh, Javed, uh, from whom we've already heard, the Archdeacon of Doncaster. Um, and then more recently, Dean Abbey, having come back to the uh, diocese to take up the role of Dean of Sheffield. Um, and I hope you will have seen in the Bishop's letter this morning uh, the appointment of Toby Hole to be the new uh, Director of Mission and uh, Ministry in succession to... Um, in succession to um, Christine, uh, who retires um, in a few weeks' time, and Mark Kane, who retired in, uh, in April. Uh, and again, I have to say, I feel energised and 
um, thoroughly well supported by the calibre of the colleagues, new and old, uh, on, the, um, on the senior staff team. Um, and what a fabulous occasion it was on, um, at the last weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, as we gathered at the Cathedral Church for uh, those ordinations. Um, eight priests ordained on Saturday, uh, with the ninth to follow when medical um, circumstances allow. Uh, Fourteen uh, deacons ordained um, uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, could have been 16, uh, two to be um, uh, followed up on as soon as um, circumstances allow. Uh, Fourteen um, deacons ordained in, um, uh, in the morning, one further in the afternoon and one further in the evening. And of those 16 deacons, 10 stipendary. No one I've spoken to can remember the last time in the Diocese of Sheffield we ordained 10 uh, stipendary deacons. And for this, we thank God. So, um, so if we've got 10 more minutes uh, or thereabouts, um, uh, tell us about the, a bit about the programme and things that we ought to uh, look out for in the next 48 hours or so. Sure. Um, so a few things I just want to remind you of um, for this time. Um, we'll say some things about the domestics of, of, of life here uh, at the conference centre, if you haven't visited it before, um, in just a moment. But you'll see that we've put together a really careful programme for you. Uh, huge thanks to the conference team. Let's have a quick whoop for the conference planning team. <laughs> Um, we've tried to think really carefully on your behalf. That doesn't mean we'll have thought of everything. So if you've got an issue that you need to talk to us about, please come and find me um, or, or Christine um, or um, others on the conference planning team. Just give us a wave if you're on the conference planning team. Yep, there's a few faces. Hopefully um, you can uh, know who to speak to about that. Um, but uh, you will see that as part of the programme, there's a series of workshops which we have described as optional um, and Places are filling up fast for those workshops in person. There's plenty of room for the online ones, um, so uh, don't fret. But if you do know that you'd like to attend a workshop, please go onto the app, um, which we'll say more about in a moment, um, and book yourself in and uh, do that uh, quickly so that you're not disappointed um, if you would like to do that. Um, we've also already experienced um, the beauty of worship together as God's people. Really grateful to Alistair and the team over here. Let's give them a little whoop. <laughs> Who have again, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on a minute. Just hang on a minute. Now, Alistair has said he doesn't want to be sung happy birthday to. So what I was going to say is it is his birthday, so I suggest that you definitely buy him a drink in the bar. Is that all right? Yes, definitely. Okay. Happy birthday, Alistair. Um, so um, uh, we have tried to curate worship for you so that it can be meaningful for everyone. With our vast diversity, you can imagine that's quite a thing to do. Um, and so we hope within the programme of worship that is offered, you will choose that which can bring you life and which will be a blessing to you in this time. Um, so please do bring your best self to that and participate uh, in it uh, throughout uh, the time that we have together. Um, one particular element that we have the opportunity to, uh, to do together is to pray. Um, and it might be that you're someone who would just really value the opportunity to have some quiet time. Um, the chapel is just that way, um, and there's a space there set up for you to do that if you'd like to. Um, but there are some particular folks who have said that they're willing to be on a prayer team so that if you would like uh, particularly to pray with somebody, um, there would be those folks who would love to do that with you. So again, if you know yourself to be on the prayer team, it's all on the app, but just as a visual reminder, please could you stand up where you are? I don't think they're all in the room. Uh, yeah, they are all in the room, great, okay. There's a few folks. Um, and uh, there's another one there, <laughs> hiding in the corner. It's, please sit down. Um, so uh, that's... Um, uh, for informal prayer, of course, you can ask anyone you like to pray with. Uh, there's plenty of people to choose from in this room. Um, if it's your tradition, or perhaps not, but you would value the opportunity uh, to have a time of confession, a formal time of confession with somebody, um, there are um, names of those who will be receiving confession and the times that they will be available in the foyer outside the chapel. And in the interest of confidentiality, all you need to do to book a slot is put a cross in the right time box with the right person. That doesn't sound too complicated, does it? Have I explained that clearly? 
marvellous, and there are male and female uh, priests to be able to do that with uh, during these days. Where am I? Okay. We're also delighted that we're having the chance to learn together. Uh, a Darston conference is a time of learning for all of us. Um, we're delighted to have uh, both Steve Moyes and Jen Strawbridge opening God's word with us, and we hope that God will speak to us uh, during uh, that time, but also that we will respond. So after those sessions, there will be times to engage in group listening, um, and uh, we hope that you'll really feel able to participate well and to share our learning from God's word with one another um, in response to all that God is revealing to us. Um, but we're particularly grateful to Jen and to Steve um, for being willing. And so it's a lovely reflection of the kind of ministry that we exercise in the diocese. One lay, one ordained, one male, one female. This has been very deliberately uh, put together so that we hear from the fullness of the people of God, as it were, during our days together at conference. I think finally, the only other thing I want to say is that we have tried not to pack the space too much. You'll see, particularly in the evenings, we've given you rather generous spaces. Of course, there'll be time uh, to meet together in all sorts of ways, and especially during the meals. Um, but we do hope that you'll make the most of the opportunity just to be together. Uh, we've all been denied so very much because of wretched COVID. Um, we understand that some of you might feel more apprehensive about that. We do also understand that some of you might just need to sleep, and that's okay. If you've left small children at home and you just sneak off to bed early, we understand, okay? So there's nothing compulsory about this, but we will feel delighted if you go away having made some new friends. Perhaps people you didn't expect necessarily to get on with or even think that you have anything in common with, bar the Lord Jesus, of course. But that's one of the joys of conference. We hope that you'll feel richer from the experience of mixing together. And so we trust that God will be at work by his spirit just as much in the bar as in the Bible study. I think you're going to say something about the app next. I um, am, but I'm also going to wait for you to name check the Archbishop. Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> On Wednesday. <laughs> always write everything down. He's not on my list. Um, we are very delighted to have a, a highly honoured guest. Uh, on Wednesday, we've got Archbishop Stephen Cottrell coming to join us for our, uh, our last uh, formal session together and to lead us in worship, which will be a great joy. One of the things you may not know has been going on in the Church of England is a really careful and thoughtful strategic vision and strategy project, if you like, in terms of discerning what God is saying to us us being the huge uh, Church of England, um, and so it'd be wonderful to hear, uh, Archbishop Stevens being very involved in that, but it'd be wonderful to hear uh, how much our strategy is really aligned to what's going on in the wider Church of England, so we are really delighted. And don't tell him that I forgot him, okay? <laughs> uh, and finally, um, briefly, the app. Um, the app is really important. What colour is it? Pink. That's not particularly important, but the app is important. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a gimmick. Um, we have sought very deliberately, intentionally, to build on all the digital advancement that we've all made over the course of the past two years. We've tried to create a genuinely hybrid conference. We've tried to create a conference that will enable the maximum possible participation by those joining us online. And to enable that, it is really, really important that those who are present on site use the app. Otherwise, we won't achieve a, a hybrid um, outcome. So um, please, 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 uh, if you haven't yet done so, um, download and explore the, uh, the app. Familiarize yourself um, with it. We're going to try and be quite disciplined about using the language on site and online. So for example, um, uh, if the worship, if there's a worship offering, which is online, you can join it online even if you're on site. We want to, to muddle the, uh, the, the blur the two categories as far as possible, but be careful about the language that we're, uh, we're using um, to describe the hybrid um, conference as a whole. Uh, in particular, I want to encourage those of you who are on site to be, um, uh, to, 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 to be to bias towards making use of the chat function 
and not just to chat. Because your chat will, will not allow those who are joining us online to engage and join in. If you use the chat function on the app, then it really will. And via the um, chat function, uh, you can chat globally. You can chat to everybody, and we can have a, a conference-wide conversation going. Uh, and if you've got something um, witty but not necessarily wholesome that you particularly want to say, uh, you can use private messaging as well <laughs> via, the, uh, via the app and target your uh, witticism to uh, a close friend whose um, confidentiality you think you can trust. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on that note, I think it'd be just great to just um, thank the tech team. They were here last night. They've been here for hours already, and uh, they've done amazing work so far um, as it is, but lots of planning has gone into that. So can we just say thank you to them? Um, And there you can see online participants. Give us a wave if you're seeing us online. We're seeing you. Give them a wave back, folks. Marvellous. We have connection. It's great to see your smiling faces on screen as well as in the room. Um, and um, also, if you are a user of social media, you'll see that um, Released to Shine is a nice little natty title, isn't it? It'd be great, wouldn't it, if we got the uh, hashtag trending, for those of you who use Twitter, uh, Released to Shine. We could give it a go, couldn't we? Just see if anyone notices in the Church of England, just wake them up a little bit. Um, so uh, yeah, so do, um, do post things. Um, please don't post photos without asking people, especially if it's of them. Um, but um, also do just um, enjoy that communication element, which will add a richness uh, to what we're doing. Um, as we've said, um, we have the gift of these days. We realize that some of you have taken annual leave to be here. Um, and you've cleared all sorts of other things, you've made all sorts of other arrangements to be here, uh, and we don't take that lightly. Um, we want to say thank you for that, and we want to say please now receive it as gift from the Father of all good gifts who comes to dwell with us in these days. And please would you seek to be a gift to those that you encounter during these days. That is one thing that we have control of, isn't it, ourselves? And if we can put ourselves in the way of being that gift, that's the posture we adopt towards these days, I think we're in for a really fantastic time. I'm gonna invite Christine, and I think we should just give her an extra whoop as she comes to just say a few things to us now. Thank you, Sophie. Um, just want to say to Toby, I'm not gone yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm slightly nervous standing here because I'm wondering, having seen Pete's cat, whether Sophie's got me a personalised pinny, because I'm about to do some housekeeping notices. Hopefully not. Um, for those of you who are online, I hope, trust you know where your loos are and where you can get drinks. <laughs> For those of you who are on site in this building, the loos are on the way to the sports hall, which are just directly opposite here. And there is lots of drinks machines around the site where you can help yourself whenever you want to drinks. Um, there is in the sports hall, once you've been to the loo, just carry on and go down to the sports hall. And in the sports hall, you will find that there are lots of resources there. Julia's there with lots of things from the resource center. We will have other people coming in who are exhibitors and other members of the diocesan team for things that will be there on tables. So, for example, I know that there are booklets on focal ministry. Um, and there will be other things, uh, clerical shirts, folks, um, EIG, there will be, I think the generous giving folks will be there at various stages throughout the conference. So do, do check out the sports hall. Um, and then worship booklets, uh, they were on your tables when you came in today. Could you leave them there? We will transfer them over to the chapel because all other worship will be uh, either in the chapel or online. Um, but you do know that you've got the worship booklets on your phones and on your apps, so you don't need a worship booklet if you've got your app with you. And finally to say, this afternoon when you come back after lunch, would you please sit on the tables 
that the number on the back of your um, lanyard has given you because we want to be in group works. And like the folks online, you're going to, you have been randomly allocated to groups, just as the folks online will be as well, for those conversations. So please, would you make sure that you sit on the table that corresponds to the number on the back of your name thing that you've got on your lanyard. And would you do that every time we have a Bible study because those are going to be the groups in which you do your listening together and your, feed, your feeding back and your praying after the end of our Bible studies together. I think that's all I wanted to say. one bit of timing in the programme that we ought to be most disciplined about for the sake of the staff here at um, the Hayes is, is meal timings and lunch is due to begin in um, 90 seconds time. So uh, we're going to conclude with the, the closing prayers on page 8 um, but it would then be really helpful if some of uh, you who are um, most mobile can hot foot down um, and begin to form a queue so others, others of us can then join. It means that we're not keeping staff unnecessarily waiting. Uh, if you're able, may I invite you to stand? <laughs> we join together in our conference prayer. Living God, in baptism you have called each one of us to shine as a light for Christ in the world to your glory and have equipped us in the power of your Spirit. Look with mercy on us your people in the Diocese of Sheffield, bless our conference on site and online, and as we gather around word and sacrament, renew, release, and rejuvenate us, that we may be ever more fruitful in your service, for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us fix our gaze with face unveiled upon the glory of the Lord that we may be transformed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us always. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet one another as far as we feel comfortable with a sign of peace. <laughs>